Thank you, Firstly, uh, good evening, everyone, and congratulations to Normita and Sanjay. Um, I was asked outside, you know, um, why did you agree to read the book today, or why did you agree to be here today? And uh, I've done a lot of, um, a lot many ads with Normita and Shubir at White Light, and I was petrified of them as a model. So the moment I got a call from Namita, it firstly took me a day to return the call. <laughs> now you know why. <laughs> Not again. I thought, you know, I, did, I didn't know what she was going to say. And then she said, you know, I've uh, written a book and will you launch it? Before she could complete her sentence, I said yes. <laughs> but, you know, this book is of course called The Wrong Turn. You're in very good company. <laughs> no, but I must tell you that, you know, the book is called The Wrong Turn, but ironically, my, um, my life as an actor took the right turn working with Navata and Shubir. I remember, you know, I thought acting was about a pretty face and okay, I, I did think I had a pretty face back then. <laughs> Uh, but you know, I thought that that's what it was about, and I was doing a lot of ads, and then we went to Rajkot for a for an ad film. Uh, it was about a bike. I don't want to name it for obvious reasons, but uh, we were doing the ad, and you know, uh, both the male model and me just couldn't get the moment right. It was about this man, uh, you know, uh, who's just come back from the army and who gets a call. There's a I message on the radio calling all army personnel back to the front and we just couldn't get it right and I remember getting fired by Namita and Shubir and I remember then you know I uh, somehow I got the shots right and then there was a shot um, there was a hand shot and normally they have hand models to do it so you know I hadn't really manicured my fingers or anything I hold the transistor and she fires me. She says, your nails are chipped. And you know, you're firstly this a woman in the village. You're not going to have such long nails. And then, you know, to make matters worse, one nail is shorter than the rest of them. And I, I was mortified. You know, I went back into the room. I had tears in my eyes and I said, what the hell? Why is she? But when I came out, she actually had this chat with me, which just made me look at everything very differently. It was actually that ad film, and I've never had a chance to thank you personally for that, but thank you so much. Because, you know, during that shoot, she said, it's so important for an actor to just soak in experiences of all kinds, whether you like it or not. You know, keep observing people, read the newspapers, read books, watch plays, movies, listen to music you like and don't like. Just keep yourself open to experiences. That's when you'll be able to feel a moment that you you know, haven't experienced personally. And I think that changed a lot for me and which is why, uh, which is why I'm here today to say thank you more than anything else and all the best to both of you. Sanjay, uh, you're a bonus, I know you're better half. <laughs> uh, uh, very well. <laughs> um, and I was thrilled to know that you've co-authored the book and all the best to both of you. I, that's a long speech, should I even read now? <laughs> So um, Dev Braj is one of the characters and Aditi is the woman, the one woman in the book. And Dev Braj is uh, injured, he's in hospital and Aditi has been looking after him and this is a section from there. Dev Raj felt, le Dev Raj felt restless. He had slept the whole afternoon and now in the evening felt cooped up. Aditi had been completely avoiding him the last few days. The Malay nurse, he kept forgetting her name, had taken over. Her rather rough, matter-of-fact ministrations, very different from Aditi's careful hands. He was irritated by Aditi's absence, her recalcitrance, her refusal to meet him halfway. To hell with her, Prissy missed two shoes. He rang his bell, but no one came. Where was everybody? 
he struggled to ease himself out of his bed and managed to collapse onto his wheelchair. Outside, the cold antiseptic smell of the floor cleaners made him sneeze. He could see the nurse's station at the far end, light spilling out of an open door. But he didn't fancy talking to any of them. He felt a cool current of air coming from somewhere. He swerved and headed for its promise of freedom. A veranda led out onto a small walled garden. Crickets chirped. The oversweet fragrance of some nocturnal flower, the damp smell of earth, filled his lungs. It was turning dark twilight softening the outlines of the little stone cheru perched under a drooping willow. He suddenly thirsted for a stiff drink and a cigarette. He thought of Nishonko, how he would never light a second cigarette from his match, calling it sniper bait. One strike, the enemy can't draw a bead. But you, pl but you pass the flame to another cigarette, he's got you in his cross sights and poof, your head bursts like a watermelon as you bend down to cup the light. All of a sudden, he missed Nishonko, missed his dry, reserved manner, his down-to-earth words. He missed Pandeji and even the ever-disapproving Captain Navaz. He missed the male ribaldry and the clean single-mindedness of soldiers engaged in battle. He realized that none of them had tried to find out how he was that the knowledge had been secretly rankling inside. Did no one care? Or maybe they didn't even know where he... Or maybe they didn't even know where he was. A shadow darkened the doorway. A figure in white, a nurse, stood there, shoulders hunched, indistinct in the twilight. Hello? Devraj called out softly. She straightened up, stepped into a spill of light. It was Aditi. He was absurdly happy to see her. She drew in a deep, shuddering breath. What are you doing out here? Following doctor's orders, doing my evening constitutional. Where's everybody? He was glad to have her back. She shook her head as if trying to clear it. One of the operations up north, it went wrong. We've all been busy. Are you okay? A long sigh of bone tiredness. She absentmindedly started peeling off surgical gloves. He saw they were soaked in blood. He noticed that she still had a surgical mask curled around her throat. Without looking at him, she started to talk in a flat monotone. They tell us it's useless, you know, to waste time and supplies on the ones who are too, too damaged. It's so tough to get medicines, morphine. We're always running short. So who deserves them more? The ones who can continue to fight? Or the ones who have already fought so hard and sacrificed so much? We make that call every night. We play God. He wheeled his chair, reached out his hand. She took it absentmindedly, slowly sliding down the snow stone wall till she was resting on the stone flags, propped against his bandaged leg. He cupped his hand on the nape of her neck, she leaned back, accepting the solace. They accept our professional judgment silently. No complaints. But their eyes, they brush their eyes. What happens if we're wrong? Maybe if he had held on a little longer, given him some more penicillin, maybe. Who did you lose? Too many. Ambar Kasim. A big bull of a man. A laugh like a big drum told me to give the morphine to the bachas, the kids. Went so gently into the night with his God's name on his shattered lips. She started to cry softly, hot, fat drops. He leaned forward and enfolded her, burying his face in the springly, curly, cloudy mass of her hair. She smelled of hay, spring water, oranges and lye. They remained like that for a long moment. Then she stirred turned her face up to his. He stared at her at the wide apart eyes, the dark bruises of weariness like smudged coal underneath. She stared back. His hair had grown, his hair had grown back curly. 
He had not been shaving and his cheeks, hollow, thin, were shadowed with the beginnings of a beard. The irises of those grey, gold-flecked eyes were wide open, dilated like a cat's. The scar across his forehead, still healing, was a livid pink. She reached up to touch it with her fingertips. He held them, brought them to his lips. Then they kissed, chased at first, the merest brush of lip against lip. Then exploring, feeling their way, then the shock of hunger, and finally the plunge into the wet secret recesses of each other. It was her first kiss. You can't come late and say such things. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to launch the book. So we would like the book to launch. <laughs> Captain Sanjay Chopra. Mr. Umang Tiwari, Ajay Mago, 